Hello, and uh, welcome to our second lecture uh, for AGO 325. Um, now I am going to go ahead and say this. I'm about to flex on you pretty hard. Uh, so the goal of this class is I'm about to show you uh, every, every single uh, equation that we are going to be using for the remainder of this course. Uh, now, I do, do give a caveat here. Uh, we're going to derive some equations. They're going to use these equations. Uh, we're going to mathematically determine some equations that don't have anything to do with these equations, but solve these equations. Um, so this isn't absolutely every single equation we're going to be using in this class. Uh, but uh, these are the most important equations for this course. And this is the foundation of everything we're going to be dealing with when it comes to um, analog circuits. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, so the first piece that uh, we're going to be talking about is power and energy. Look how pretty that is. Did you believe that I wrote that with my own hand? Um, now it's about to get messy. Um, so we're going to start with some power and energy equations. Um, the most important equation that we have here is that power... Let's see if I can... I need a touch screen. That would have been a good idea. Power... And that is going to be equal to uh, the integral, uh, no, sorry, the derivative, get, get ahead of myself here, d dt of energy. Okay, so what does that mean? It means this is a, a general definition of power, by the way. Um, it means that if you were to integrate the amount of power that you have over time, uh, you would get energy. Uh, similarly, if you take the derivative of the energy that you have over time, you get power. So uh, this is this is probably the most important equation that we have here, uh, because if you can figure out electrical energy or if you can figure out electrical power, one of the two, you can figure out one of the other two that you need. Uh, now, do keep in mind, this is going to be a function of time. This is also going to be a function of time. We're not dealing with constants anymore. We're now dealing with functions. Um, and we'll be dealing with that a little bit later uh, this week. Well, sorry, no. Lecture I give later today uh, when I talk about power equations. Um, because we really do need to be able to understand what is power and energy. What is that relationship between power and energy? Um, so... We'll talk about that, um, but for now, you'll need to know this. Uh, the second really, really important equation that you need is that power, which I'm going to designate by P, is equal to voltage, which is, by the way, a function of time, multiplied by current which is also a function of time. Okay, so P equals VI. Um, some people write it PIV because then you can say PIV. Um, but these are, these are kind of the two most important equations for this entire course. Uh, the relationships between power, energy, voltage, and current uh, are really quintessential to absolutely everything. Uh, one of the things you're going to need to, to recognize here is that if I ask you what the power is in an item, you're going to need to know both the voltage and the current through that component. Okay. Uh, now, there's a lot of ways to figure those out. We're going to be discussing those in this class. But a lot of the questions that I have for you in this course are determine the amount of power in this component, determine the amount of power in this component, ter determine the amount of power that's coming out of the power supply, determine the amount of power that's coming through... Uh, these sets of components um, because it not just forces you to be able to understand the amount of voltage that's being transferred through it but it also forces you to understand how much current is traveling uh, and then recognize that this equation is true um, 
So again, we're going to be talking in a little bit um, later in my next lecture about exactly what it is that that is the relationship between these, how to do some basic power calculations. I'll show you what I mean by that. Um, I wish I could be doing this on a whiteboard. I really do. Uh, but I don't have a whiteboard, so I have Microsoft Paint 3D, which is like a whiteboard, but way worse. Um, anyways, I'll stop whining. Look at that box. I just drew a nice box. It's a great box. All right. That's how I'm going to erase my work. <laughs> I am a Microsoft Paint wizard, uh, if we're honest here. So that's the power and energy equations. Um, And uh, we do have other equations that we're going to need to talk about. Um, so, after power and energy, uh, let's go ahead and talk about uh, the relationship between voltage and current in a resistor. Um, now this is this is an equation that you should recognize. This is Ohm's law. Okay, here V equals I times R. Your voltage in a resistor is equal to the current through that resistor multiplied by the resistance of that resistor. Now, this relationship between voltage and current is only true for linear resistors. Um, and there are very limited applications for this, this uh, equation. Um, we're going to be using this equation a lot for the first month of this class. And then we're going to be using it a lot after that, but mostly it's going to be this first, this first month. Um, this is a very easy equation. If you have a voltage, usually resistance is fixed. So... If you have a voltage of 5 volts and you have a resistor that has a resistance of, also let's say this is 5 volts, let's say this resistance over here is uh, 100 ohms, well you can figure out the current there. You only need two components here to figure out what that third one is. So here this would be 5 divided by 100, or this would be a current of 0 0.05 amps. Okay, awesome. It's really easy to work with this. This is... Um, this equation is the nicest that we have in this class. It does not get nicer than this. But we have other equations that we all we also need to work with, and uh, that's just the resistance one. So the next uh, equation that we're going to be working with is capacitance. Now this doesn't have a nice name like Ohm's law does. Uh, but in the capacitance equation, what you have is the current, which I'm going to designate with a lowercase i, just because my eyes start looking weird, uh, is equal to the capacitance value C times D V D T. Now this is also the relationship between voltage and current. In Ohm's law, the relationship was V equals IR, where voltage is a linear relationship with current. Here, this is actually a derivative relationship. If you integrate voltage, you get current. If you take the derivative, no. Yeah, if you integrate current, you get voltage. If you take the derivative of voltage, you get current. You have to multiply it by this constant C. Um, C here is given in farads. nice so C is given in farads um, this is in volts and this is in amps so um, that's just the the general nature here uh, one of the, the issues that comes up with using this equation is that this equation is infinitely more complex than V equals IR here you can have zero voltage and you can have a current on the flip end 
you can have a positive constant voltage and have no current at all. So you can have a voltage and no current, you can have a current and no voltage. That's not something you can do in V equals IR because if one of those three values is zero, all of them are basically zero. Well, that voltage and the current are zero and the resistance probably is non-zero. Um, but here in the capacitance, you can have one of these values be zero and not have the other one be zero. It makes the, the equation more complex. Um, but this is another equation that you need, I equals C dV D dt, dV dt. Um, so now we'll go to the next set of equations. Um, similar to capacitance, we also have inductance. Okay, in inductance, uh, what we're going to do for inductance is inductance is uh, we'll talk about it a little bit more it's actually related to the magnetic energy storage uh, capacitance is related to electric uh, field storage uh, inductance is magnetic field storage um, but here the relationship is the exact opposite of capacitance here you have V equals L times the derivative of current which right as I again DT you'll notice these are all derivatives of time voltage is equal to the inductance L times di dt here the inductance L is given in Henry's Would have been easier to actually just type it out with text, but whatever. Um, believe it or not, my handwriting on here is cleaner than when I write on the board. Good luck this semester. <laughs> uh, okay, so that's those are four of the most important equations. Um, we have two more really really important equations that we need to cover uh, before before we can really say that we've gotten quote-unquote all of the equations um, now the two equations that we need to cover are equations that you should have seen in physics 2 you may not have seen in physics 2 and you may not remember from physics 2 I don't know I don't know how much those cards you with um, these are Kirchhoff's laws uh, Kirchhoff's laws are derivatives of uh, natural physics laws they're actually a derivative of the law of conservation of mass and the law of conservation of energy, both of which are absolutely essential uh, for you to understand this course. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit more about this when we do our lecture on Kirchhoff's laws, um, but for now, just suffice that I'm about to hand you some equations. I'm going to try to explain them to you, and then we'll talk about them later. Okay? And this is the way for all of these equations. I'm giving them to you because I want you to have a reference where you can go back and say, Okay, these equations are important. These equations are the ones I really need constantly forever. Um, so, just keep that in mind. Um, the first Kirchhoff's Law is, um, number one, this is... I'm going to go ahead and call this... Ah! Set this to slightly smaller text. And this is going to be Kirchhoff's voltage law. Okay. Now, Kirchhoff's voltage law, the way that Kirchhoff's voltage law works is that you have... I'm going to try to draw some boxes connected by lines. Um, you have some boxes connected by lines like this. Assume that these boxes are connected. It turns out I'm not really all that great at drawing when it comes to Microsoft Paint. Um, we have all these boxes connected in a line. What Kirchhoff's voltage law says is if you have an electron that travels through this entire circuit here, goes through this entire loop, when it gets back to this point right here, it needs to be at the exact same energy level as it was when it started there. Okay. So basically the idea is if you have two electrons located at the same place, they're both at the same energy level. Um, and it doesn't matter how many times you go around this loop, it should always end up at that exact same energy level at, at that exact same point. Um, 
you can think of it like a, a roller coaster here. Kirchhoff's voltage law. Um, if this is the top of the roller coaster, and then this is the first loop-de-loop, -loop, and then this is the, the where it hits the bottom, and then this is the, the end where you get off the ramp, uh, you have to go all the way back up to the top of that uh, peak again to get back up here. So uh, you're not going to you know go around this loop once in the roller coaster, and then all of a sudden this is at a different height. Okay, you can also think of it like a mountain. If you're going down, if you're skiing down a mountain, this is the top of the mountain, this is the first, you know, top two-thirds of the mountain, this is the top one-third of the mountain, and this is the bottom of the mountain, and you have to climb on the ski lift and go back all the way up. Um, you're not going to be trying, you're not going to be getting to this exact same place again, and it's like halfway up the mountain now, uh, unless you fell off a ski lift, in which case you're still not in the same circuit anymore. You're not at the same point. In order to get to the same point, you have to be at the same elevation level, you have to be at the same energy level, okay? Um, so that's that's really what Kirchhoff's voltage law here stands for. Um, I'm just going to really quickly type that out um, down her. So let me And here I'm going to call this a loop because this is a loop. Uh, it's a closed loop because it connects all the way around. Um, You don't gain or enter or lose energy uh, by traveling through the loop once. Okay. Um, now this is a derivative of of uh, the conservation of energy law, uh, as I've said. Um, again, you you don't go around here and you end up with one more energy value than you did before. Otherwise, you're getting that energy from somewhere and something is wrong. Um, so what that means in the second definition is that. Um, the sum of all energy changes in a loop is equal to zero. So if I calculate how much energy changes from here to here to here to here to here to here, um, that's going to be equal to zero. And you can look at that the same way as, you know, climbing a mountain. The sum of all elevation changes on your mountain is going to be equal to zero if you go back to the exact same place. Why is that? Because you can't go back to the exact same place and be at a different elevation because you're not at the same place, if that's the case. Um, so this is what Kirchhoff's voltage law is. Uh, now I'm going to give you the equation for it. Really, it just takes this piece here. Uh, oh, I could have just been doing that the whole time. Here, I thought it was a pro. Oh, well. All right, so we got our sum, sum of all voltages. And I'm going to identify voltages in a loop is equal to zero. Uh, now we're going to work a little bit more with this equation. We're going to be doing some math with this equation. I'll show you how to use it. Uh, but as of right now, just keep in mind that that's, that is the equation for KVL. KVL. Okay. V L. We're going to be using KVL and KCL extensively in this course. If you don't understand KVL and KCL, you're going to fall behind in this class. Um, so I, we're going to be talking KVL and KCL extensively on Thursday. Uh, I believe I devote at least two lectures to it um, because it is such a very important concept. Uh, you have to be able to understand KVL and KCL. So this is KVL, traveling around in a loop, it's equal to zero, okay? All right, so let me switch out of here and then go ahead and delete this. And the next one that we're going to be talking about is KCL, like I said. Um, this is KCL stands for, I think it would help if I actually do a text box, right? Kirchhoff's current law, KCL, K-C-L. Um, now, the, the idea behind KCL is if I have, um, you know, like, let's say I've got, nice, I should actually take my brush home. Let's say I've got two, 
a road coming in to an intersection. Okay, and this is my this is my intersection. Okay, and let's say I've got you know three other roads in this intersection. Okay, and let's assume that they're all one-way roads, just to make this fun. If this is a one-way road, if this is a one-way road, and this is a one-way road, and this is a one-way road. If I have four roads connected to this intersection, the total sum of vehicles here is going to be equal to zero, because no vehicle is just going to stop in the middle of the intersection here. Okay? Vehicles are going to continue through the intersection on both sides. So that means the total number of vehicles that go through is equal to the number of vehicles that go into the intersection, which here both of these feed into the intersection, is going to be equal to the number of vehicles going out of the intersection. Okay? We don't suddenly gain a vehicle coming out of the intersection or lose a vehicle that goes in. It's just like we had five vehicles drive into the intersection, but we only have four vehicles drive out of the intersection. That didn't happen. Okay? That's a violation of conservation of mass. Uh, so here, Kirchhoff's current law is a derivation of the conservation of mass, KCL. Um, and in layman's terms, uh, what KCL says is uh, that the number of electrons entering and leaving a node, which we're going to call this intersection a node, um, are equal. Okay, so the, num the same number of electrons that enter into the node and the same number of electrons that leave the node. The same number of vehicles that enter into this intersection are the same as the number of vehicles that leave the intersection. Okay, <clears throat> so that's layman's terms. They're equal equal. Uh, now the actual verbiage for the equation are that um, the sum of all currents into a node are zero. Okay, uh, now I'll explain this a little bit again in the next, in Thursday's lectures uh, when we, we get a little bit more in depth onto this. Um, but what you need to know for now is if I go back here and delete this, um, sum of all i in a node is equal to zero. Um, well, that's gross. We have loops and nodes now, and now we're introducing weird concepts and weird terms, and um, things are getting a little out of hand already, and this is just the first class. No, I'm kidding. Um, I'm trying to set this through as logically as possible for you, um, but we are very clearly going to have to discuss what is a loop what is a node uh, in order to understand this course. I've already given you the power calculation. I've already given you uh, current. I've already given you uh, voltage relationships for resistors, capacitors, and inductors. Uh, I've now given you the two uh, Kirchhoff's laws. This is it for this class. Uh, these are all of the important equations. Almost everything we do is a derivative of the equations that I've already given you. Um, so if you want to know whether or not this class gets more challenging from here, uh, really what it, what it comes down to is we're just going to be using these equations over and over again, over and over and over again in multiple different applications. Uh, how do you combine them? How do you, what happens when you have two components in a, in a row? How do you handle uh, understanding power through those components? How do you determine how much voltage or current are going into those components? Um, and that's... That's really where, where we sit here, is um, we're just trying to figure out power. That's it. Uh, the very first beginning of this course is we're going to be trying to understand how power flows through different types of circuits. Uh, we're going to be using Kirchhoff's laws, and we're going to be using resistance, uh, capacitance, and inductance equations to figure that out. Okay. Um, there is some gross math. You will have to do some uh, second-order differential circuits. Uh, but just bear with me here. You have all the equations at this point. You, I've just given them to you. Okay, we're just going to be taking these equations, using them over and over and over again, 
and using those to ultimately identify you know what is what what is going on so all right i will x out of this and uh <laughs> thanks duncan i was not checking my it's not checking my uh responses but uh, I'm going to record some power calculation stuff in the next lecture, uh, and then we'll be done for today. <laughs> I apologize that this is like two and a half hours of lecture. I think I'm actually going to end up getting this done in an hour and a half. Um, it is painful to sit and watch YouTube videos for an hour and a half when it's my delightful monotone voice. Um, so... Hello, everybody. Um, welcome back to, uh, my live streams. Uh, if you haven't already, just like and subscribe my videos, uh, so I can keep making this high quality content. Actually, I don't want to make high quality content for you anymore. I hate virtual lectures. I really, this is killing me on the inside. Um, I just want to be there, like, teaching in person. Um, and FYI, at 8 in the morning, I am tired and I say lots of dumb stuff. So students tend to really like me at 8 in the morning. Um, yeah. Anyways, what we're going to be talking about this lecture is... Um, I'm going to zoom in a little bit, I guess. Make this a little bit more visible on the screen. Uh, what we're going to be talking about is power and energy calculations. Okay. So as I mentioned in the last lecture, um, your power is going to be equal to... Uh, the derivative of uh, energy, which I'm, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and just write it as E. Okay? No, that's not what I... No! E. Oh, that's weird. Hmm, did not know that. Okay, using a different bracket now. E. There we go. For some reason, that apparently is a shortcut for like yen? Oh, no, a euro. Huh, weird. Um, so power is equal to the, the time derivative of energy. So what I'm going to do here quick is I'm just going to plot uh, energy. And we're going we're gonna to try to get some foundations of uh, how we're going to be able to calculate power uh, given energy. Um, and then we'll, we'll step back and we'll talk about how to calculate power given voltage and current. So let's say I have... Uh, just some kind of a, an equation here. So we'll start with, uh, let's see, I'll have this be time, T, and I'll have this be energy, and this will be in joules, okay? Um, so here we'll have zero, uh, zero point one. Um, we'll extend this down to five seconds. seconds instead of t in there so we'll say for energy we're going to start with zero let's say stays zero stays zero um, That's not correct. My apologies. So I'm just populating this. You're just watching me type numbers in. Aren't you living in the pinnacle of your life? Yep, 
you know what, I'm going to be down there. 2.5 seconds is good enough for me. So we have now some function of energy as it changes with time. Now, I like graphs. Um, graphs are good. Graphs are fun. Let's do graphs. Let's make a graph. So I'm going to go ahead and zoom back out for a second. We'll make a scatter plot. I will jump in here and select my data. Um, we'll call this Ener Enerf. Enerfra. Energy versus time. Okay. And here we've got our time. And here we've got our energy. Okay. Oh wow, I made this really nice curve and I did not mean to do that. <gasps> no, I'm kidding. Everything I do is deliberate. Don't question me. So this is our energy versus time. Okay. Now this could be the amount of heat that's in something. This could be the amount of light. Um this could be just like the amount of magnetic energy that's in this. Who knows? This is just some value of energy. Okay. Um, now just to clean this up. Let's see. Um, hmm. That's weird. Usually I'm able to pull up a properties bar over here, but, well, I guess not. Um, huh, that's weird. Well, that didn't do it. Oh, well, there we go. That's a line. Um, so here I've got this energy versus time function uh now here this is one of the things that that uh is very difficult to understand in your young education is the difference between a math function and a measured data function uh here because we don't have an actual function i friggin typed these numbers in um this would be indicative of taking a measurement like this would be like i sat there with a multimeter and i measured it at x number of times okay so this is a physical measurement. Uh, this is not a function. This is a, it, it's not a formula. I can't take a derivative of this nicely. Um, now in your math classes, you should have, uh, you should have learned what the, uh, um, you should have learned how to, to calculate a, a derivative based on numerical data. You should have calculated how to take an integral based on numerical data using uh, I believe that's where you have the, the box method. You have the, there's like four different ways of calculating it. One of them involves building a, a, a four-sided figure. There's just, there's a lot of different discrete uh, integration methods. And this is, this is another one of those times. So here, how do we figure out what the power is going through this? Well, as I mentioned before, power is the time derivative of this. So if we're looking at this energy versus time graph here, what is the slope of the line right there? Well, it's going to be equal to zero, okay? Which means there's no change in energy. Here, power is the change in energy. As soon as it reaches this part right here, the energy starts increasing. Here, we start seeing an increase in energy. The power is going to be positive. Now that positive power is, is related to the fact that the energy is increasing. Now over here, up here again, the power, the energy stays constant. You're going to have no power here. So you're going to have no power, no power, power. And here's probably going to be your highest amount of power because this is where the slope is the highest. And then it decreases back to zero. And then it goes negative. And here this is the lowest amount of power to which this back goes back to zero. Okay, so this is just graphically, this is the relationship between energy and power. When energy increases, power is positive. 
when energy decreases, power is negative. Okay, there's no real nice way of of uh, uh, you know to to just plug in an algebra formula because it's calculus. We have to use calculus here. So, um, the quick and dirty calculus example here that I'm going to use is is just using a, a simple um, well, a very, very simple, crude, discrete uh, derivative method, which is um, a formula. This is equal to that minus that. And then I put that in parentheses. And then I divide this by the amount of time, which is this minus this. Okay, so that is the change in energy over the change in time, or d j d t d d e d t, okay, which is the definition of power. So this is a very crude power calculation, but as you'll notice, I get numbers, and if we plot these numbers on this graph, um, which I can do simultaneously, uh, I'm gonna have to add uh, power versus time poor got that poor you like my poor I need to be a better hobbies uh. oh we gotta shoot and here you're gonna notice that these don't line up I'm gonna just quickly change this so that they do have the same domains. Hit OK. And that's my power. Okay. Power, you know, it's not very constant. It's not beautiful. Yes, I wrote all these numbers myself. Okay. And it's obvious. Um, but that's what the power looks like. Here, we took the derivative of this, and the derivative of this is equal to that thing right there. So nice. Um, that's how to calculate power, just very simply from, from the energy. If we understand this, you know, take a, a here we took a discrete derivative. If we actually had a formula here, um, this could be a lot different. So let's let's change this, and instead of me typing in the value, let's actually make this be a formula. Let's say um, that we're going to make this equal to um, ten times sine of this number, except I'm going to make this number divided by um, 50 because uh, then it'll stretch it out really far okay and then I will copy this formula and paste it down so now woo okay maybe 50 was a bit much actually I think this is given in job kill real class act there yeah okay okay there we go that's beautiful um, this is still power function of time no nope. we're gonna we're gonna say the power is in watts now here we know what this is we can actually take the derivative of this equation the derivative of sine is cosine minus cosine so um, I'll throw a negative out here um, there we go whoa hey whoa oops shouldn't be f4 should be e4 my bad I am masterful today. Anyways, that is the derivative of this equation. So, whoa, that is not. Or did I take the integral? Well, some questioning myself. All right, let's uh, let's. 
asking for information, specify this already. Yeah, things you do specify that already. What does it matter? Stop that. Ooh, musical device. Definition meaning. Come on, Webster's Dictionary. Give me some meaning. Oh, that makes so much more sense. Oh, it is just coasting. Hmm. Should have known that. My bad. <laughs> Should have known that. Didn't know that. Anyways, so this this is the the derivative here. Now you'll notice uh, here this is power. This is energy. Uh, when this is zero, the power value is actually at a maximum of ten. When this reaches a maximum value of 10, the power is at zero. So the power is not changing when the energy is at a maximum. Uh, however, the, the power is decreasing as the energy decreases. So again, this is just another example of, of the relationship between power and energy. Um, here, I've, done, I've given you now two examples. One of them was the example of energy being... Uh, a discrete value here now I've also given you energy being a formula value so here this is the derivative of that or on the other side it's the discrete derivative of it um, now you'll be able to notice again in each time the slope of this energy versus time graph is going to be equal to the power that's the piece that that needs to, to come out of here the most okay so that's all just a review of what you should know um, now we're going to get into the second power equation that I gave you, which is P equals V uh, times I, okay? Or PIV, depending on how you like to write it. Uh, here, um, I'm going to delete these two. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to have voltage V, and I'm going to have current I. Okay. Now both of these are functions of time as well. Um, so if we have voltage that's constant, and let's say, you know what, let's take this current equation and let's make it kind of a, a square sinusoid. So this is equal to um, 0 0.1 times sine of this value then I want to square that okay um, all right so now what I have is here's my voltage here's my current it's a it's a really low current but it does um, I guess I can very quickly uh, just jump on here and uh, I'm going to shut off what is currently called energy versus time, which I suppose I should edit this. This is voltage now. And then edit this one to say current versus time. There we go. So you'll notice that this has a it has a sinusoidal shape, okay. And then our voltage, as I showed you in the other graph, uh, is actually constant. So, um, how do we calculate the power from here? Well, let's say I want to know what the power is at one second. How do I calculate the power at one second? Well, we go over here and I, we look at this equation, and it says P equals VI. We know what V is. We know what I is. And we know what they both are at one second. So if I take these two and just multiply them, is that the power at one second? Well, the answer to that is yes. Actually, it is. If we were to go ahead and plot this power function for the full uh, 2.5 seconds, 
that value at one second, it doesn't change. This isn't a cumulative. It's, it doesn't depend on what the voltage in the current was at 0.2 seconds. It only really matters what is the current voltage, what is the current current. Okay, um, so we can take this and um, here I'm just going to um, select data, we'll add a series, and we'll call this power versus time. Okay, let's pick all our x values here, and then we'll pick all of our y values here. And there you go. Now you'll notice that these two have the very same shape. Uh, it's just this, this is just this multiplied by uh, the five volts that we had uh, previously. Um, which if I do that, it actually makes this whole thing really squished. So let me go in here and turn this back on. Um, this gray graph is this blue times this orange. That's, that, that's the definition of this formula. Uh, that's all it is. Now I can take this five and I can I can shift this slightly. I can say, you know what? Instead of instead of having this, what I'm going to have is I'm going to have it be uh, equal five minus five, uh, you know, five times an exponential uh, of negative um, this value. There we go. Okay, so it'll be a negative exponent. It'll now be decreasing. You'll notice that, you know, once again, you know, I just need to separate this into multiple graphs. Um, we'll do that instead of trying to, instead of trying to play around with this too much more. There we go. So I'll leave all of the pieces on this graph, but on this one, I'm going to remove the uh, voltage. Um, so exact same graphs, just now here you'll notice these no longer have the shape, the same shape because we're not multiplying the current by a constant value. We're now multiplying it by an increasing, well, the, a decreasing exponential function. So it does have a different shape than the current is entirely. Uh, but you still go back here and look at it. This value here, 1, at 1 second, if we want to calculate the power, it's just equal to the voltage at 1 second multiplied by the current at 1 second. So here, this is kind of the, the big takeaway uh, for this class. If you want to calculate the power at any time t, what you need to do is you need to calculate what the voltage is and what the current is at that time. If you can figure out what the voltage and the current is, then all you have to do is multiply them together and you have power. Okay, We're going to be doing that a lot in this class. So if I say, okay, you have X amount of power being consumed by a component and you have X amount of voltage or whatever, you're going to have to calculate one of those three values given, given that. Um, so here, let's let's play around with another example. I'm going to pull up a, a trusty Microsoft Paint real quick. Um, it's because what's life without paint? <laughs> that wasn't a joke. I don't know why I laughed. Um, so here, we'll, we'll give a problem. Um, let's do a 20 font. Um, So here we have an electrical component experiences. Um, but hey, let's do let's do a power converter for a Raspberry Pi. Okay, twelve point five watts of power. Okay. Okay, so here's your question. An electrical component experiences 12.5 watts of power and operates at 5 volts. How much current is going through the component? Well, how do we figure that out? 
Well, we use our trusty equation that I've already given you. P is equal to VI. P equals VI here. Now here, watts is the unit of power. So here you know this is 12.5. Here, volts is a measure of voltage. So here this is equal to 5. So we've just identified what we know. And given two of those values, we can figure out the third. So how much current? Well, it's going to be 12.5 divided by 5. So here, I is going to be equal to 2.5 amps. Okay, so that's pretty simple. If we're given power and we're given either voltage or current, we can figure out the other one. If we're given voltage and current, we're given, we can figure out power, okay? Um, so that's just kind of how we have to play this game. Uh, we're gonna be doing this a lot in this class, so let's do, let's do another quick power calculation. Um, So we have um, Oops, I gotta give units. So here's here's the uh, here's the function that we have. Okay, and I am gonna go back and jump into uh, Excel and play around with this a little bit more, just because I like Excel's graphical capabilities more than uh, Microsoft Paints. Uh, but yeah, I figured it, it's it's good to, to give you a workspace to just work in right here. So here we know that the voltage through a component is given by V equals 5 times uh, negative 4 exponent of T. Uh, now, if you go ahead and take your graphing calculator and plot that out, here we have a, a V versus T. Man, that is pretty. Uh, it's going to end up looking like a negative exponential function, which looks like this minus that piece right there which is just it's more just a negative curve uh, that eventually ends up at zero um, at uh, positive infinity so this is what the graph of v versus t looks like and here this is what the graph of i versus t looks like uh, it's constant at 0.01 amp okay so if we're going to try to figure out the the, the uh, power versus time graph here we have a constant here we have an exponentially decreasing function I'm gonna imagine that it's gonna look like a constant multiplied by this function so it's gonna have the same shape as this function right here um, but we'll go ahead and take that so that's 5 negative 4 so go ahead and copy paste that down here and here instead of this it's just equal to So now if I scoot over here, this is what your current versus time looks like, and this is what your power versus time looks like. Very quickly approaches zero. And as you can see here, in the voltage versus time, it also very quickly approaches zero. So um, if we go back in here, the answer to this is it's going to look like our P versus T graph is going to look like this. Okay, which is the same as the V versus T graph. So, um, now we are gonna uh, talk about Kirchhoff's laws in the next class. Uh, we're gonna get more in depth uh, on some of these topics. Um, we got a lot of learning to do before I see you. Uh, so, um, I will have you do a quiz and a reading assignment this week that will be due next probably Tuesday, um, 
you're going to want to get them done before class on Tuesday, just as a suggestion. I'm not going to be there on Tuesday, so uh, I guess have them done before you watch the video that I 